Get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. Get ready, get ready for a tea time and filter with your girl love and tea. Spilling all this hot tea on this podcast street. So get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. One tea time and filter with your girl love and tea. Hey, Tea Sippers. I hope you guys are doing good this evening. I am back with another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered, and I have my girl Emily with me. Emily, say what's up to the people. Hey, everybody. So it's been a lot going on, child, these last few days. It's been a mess. And I know me and you have been talking about the whole Coy LeRae, Benzino situation, you know, off and on for like the past week because they've been mm-hmm. going through their, you know, father-daughter drama yeah. And last night we were here with a bombshell when um, Shauna Brooks basically took to social media and posted conversations of Benzino and her. And like I, you watched the video that I did earlier on the whole situation. Yeah. Yeah. I watched it. And what was so funny is because like I said, he was speaking about this back on April 11th, but I didn't know what the hell he was talking about. So I feel like he knew this was going to come out. Yeah, and that was a horrible, like, cover-up or whatever. Because, one, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just out of the loop. Like, who the hell watched it? Ben Zeno as an actor? What movie? I, I didn't know him to be an actor. <laughs> like, what movie? Who's watching a movie with Ben Zeno, for one? <laughs> I was thinking that, too. Like, uh, acting role. Like, what movie were you in prior? Because I don't right. know him to be an actor. <laughs> Let alone the upcoming feature. And then he never mentioned the name. Like, I mean, like, is it on at the Red Box? Yeah, it's, it's on Zeus. Because <laughs> if this was three years ago, where's the where's the movie, sir? Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, he could have came up with a better lie than that. And then he just kept stuttering through it. And it's like you have all these loud guys trying to co-sign it. And it just didn't oh, yeah. make any sense. It just the story just did not pan out. Yeah, because there's so many different stories, like him on Clubhouse, and uh, then the inter- the the Vlad interview, and j- just so much going on. But with the the Clubhouse, especially, um, I don't know who they were talking about in particular. Um, I, I don't get on Clubhouse, so I don't know a lot of people who are popular on there. But whoever they were referring to, I don't know what he does. Um, But I didn't really care for the way that he was talking to him. He was being very aggressive. He was being very homophobic. Like, I I just didn't like the way that he was carrying himself in that situation. Oh, you're talking about Ion. That's the guy's name who runs the room. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. His name is Ion. Yeah, I thought they were being, like, really aggressive. Now, I know Ion and and WAC 100, they've gone back and forth, you know, before. But, yeah, Benzino did come in, like, super aggressive, super angry, and it's like, bruh, like, if there's nothing to the rumors, why are you going from clubhouse to clubhouse, room to room to keep addressing it? Yeah, and it's really unfortunate because his daughter just came out with, I believe, her freshman album. I, I personally like it. I think it's a good album. I like a couple of songs on there. Well, I like a lot of the songs, but it's got some really good songs like that I keep on repeat. And I feel like the attention should be on her right now. Like, this is her moment. This is a really big deal. Why are you making it? And granted, he might not be making it about him because I'm sure this is stuff he doesn't want out. But he's all in the news. You go, you Google Coy LeRae and he's going to pop up. Like, it should be about her right now, not about him. Right. And one thing about Benzino, I'll say this, is that I don't think he gets a lot of credit that he deserves in the industry. And this is not going to help his case. Like somebody had wrote on um, the video, they have wrote that, you know, this is the same guy who helped to create the Source magazine. He started the first hip hop awards, which was the Source Awards before BET and all them. Um, you know, he he did a lot for the culture back in like the mid, you know, the early 2000s. Yeah, yeah. And then that whole beef with Eminem, that just totally destroyed him in the Source. Yeah, I remember that. I remember because when the Nail in the Coffin song came out, I didn't even know who the hell he was talking about. But obviously I listened to Eminem, but I was like, okay, this is a pop, whatever. (laughs) You know, I like the song. But I know just recently I found it weird, too. He was talking about Eminem and then all this stuff comes up. It's like, I don't know if it's connected or not, you know, but it's like every time he brings up Eminem's name, something bad happens to him. 
Right. Because I remember downloading all that music, like I said, on Kazaa and LimeWire. Uh-huh. <laughs> Shout out to, to... Man, it's so funny. I know this is off subject, but I've heard... I called it Kazaa, but I've had so many de debates with people on what it was really called. Some people called it Kaze. Some people called it Kaza. I always called it Kazaa. But yeah, shout out to Kazaa and the dial-up and three hours. You would put in work if you wanted to hear a song. Like, you had to be patient. Oh, Yeah. If you were downloading some stuff back then on the internet, minimum three hours per song. That's uh -huh. a lot better yep. than <laughs> these with your friend. Like what me and my friend would do. Like I remember he bought the um, Get Rich or Die Trying when 50 Cent's album first dropped. And then mm -hmm. I went and bought Ludacris's album, Word of Mouth. And so then what we did, we're like, hey, you buy that album, I'll buy this album, then we'll burn them. Then you, you know, you give me your yeah. burnt and I'll give you my ludicrous burnt. So those are the things that we did when we were teenagers, you know. Yeah, so much faster doing that, too. Yeah, it was a lot faster burning a CD. But yeah, when you want to download it, I remember I would leave for work. I dropped my son off at daycare and I'd have my computer on literally all day downloading mm -hmm. the latest rap beefs because we didn't get a lot of that stuff in the midwest all that stuff was like east coast so like yep. all the east coast people they had access to it they could just go you know to like whatever bootleg you know bo bodega and get the mixtape we didn't have access so we'd have yep. to wait for them to upload it onto the internet and then burn them and i remember burning hours of like just beef songs diss tracks and the benzino and eminem that was like a big deal in the midwest because you know eminem's from the midwest so yeah. we were definitely team Eminem, you know what I'm saying? And he could just flow. Like, we understood where Benzino was coming from, but then it just sounded more like hating. Yeah, he definitely came off like a hater. And a lot of times, I don't know if he means to or not, but um, originally when all this stuff came out with Benzino, I uh, originally my first reaction was like, he is just a piece of shit. Like, I'm so annoyed with him. He stays like just not really portraying himself as a great dad to his daughter and it, the way that he treats his baby mama. I'm still trying to figure out how many kids he has. Cause we Googled it and it said two, but then he said something in one of them interviews where he has three sons. I don't know how many kids he has, but I was originally just uh, like annoyed with them. But after watching the videos, of him, especially the one where he was in them pink pants and no shirt and all that shit. Mm -hmm. I felt I, I felt bad for him. Like, it's like he's ha going through a mental breakdown. Like, it, he did mm -hmm. not seem, and I'm not trying to put, like, mental illness or anybody, I, or drug use or whatever. I don't know what that man does, you know, behind the scenes. But something is not right with him, and I kind of felt bad for him. Yeah, it was really sad, especially when he broke down crying and saying, you know, Althea, you snitched on me. And it's like, dude, like you literally destroyed her friend's, you know, property, like not destroyed it, but, you know, you're, you're punching it and doing all types of extra stuff. And I don't know. I, I think, you know, maybe there might a low key be a jealousy because he didn't help his daughter, Coyle LeRae. Coyle LeRae didn't even want to be attached to Benzino when she came into the industry. Yeah, a lot of people definitely. had no idea that that was even his daughter. And so for her to be where she's at now, where she has her album, um, Twin in Them was a bop. A lot of people jumped on the remix. Then she uh -huh. got to do the song with Nicki Minaj. So it's like, because of all this, I wonder if it low-key bothers him that she's having this success in the music industry that he wanted so bad for himself 20 years ago. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that was definitely something going on uh, with him. Because I remember, um, I've watched a lot of interviews that Koi's done and uh, she had done an interview one time where she was talking about her dad and how she remembered when she was younger, like he was really into music. Like he, that was kind of like his passion. He loved making music. And she asked him, you know, dad, why don't I ever hear none of your songs on the radio? And he was like, you know what? F that blah, blah, blah. I just do this because I enjoy doing it. I love music, but I'm sure a part of him still like he wanted that. I'm sure he, if you love doing something, I'm sure you would want to get some type of recognition or success. And you would think he would be happy for his daughter. Like, not to live vicariously through her, but oh, like she had the same passion I did, but she's gaining more success in that. But it, it does seem like it bothers him in a way, like he's constantly trying to attach himself to her or like find a way to for him to come up through it, you know? Right. Yeah, it definitely comes off as just weird. But I mean, this whole thing now with him supposedly being on the DL is insane. What did you think when you first saw the Red Roof in video? Because that went viral all over social media. 
I ain't trying to like shame nobody, but first thing I was like, damn, Benzino looks old as hell. I didn't realize he was 55 years old because just the shit that he, he, he doesn't carry himself like a 55 year old man. I also didn't know he had only fans. I ain't seen it, but I just, that was another thing. But when I saw the, <laughs> when I saw the red roof in thing, I was like, what is it with love and hip hop people and red roof in for, and also, um, Hey, Tea Sippers, to listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.